Yo, what's happening, my tribe? If you're looking for the best weapon movesets, weapon quickness, and power in the entire DLC, look no further because Milady, the new light greatsword, has it all. I decided to grab it and went with the dexterity intelligent frost build, inflicting frostbite status effects super quick, doing great amount of damage with the help of a new Ash of War and complementary spells to fill the versatility gaps. You'll be smoking enemies with grace and style. Like always, I will show how this build works and its components like the weapons, armor choice, talismans, and everything you need to feast your eyes with the smooth movesets and great power in Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. Let's go, game on. This dexterity intelligence build relies on its very powerful and consecutive fast attacks with the ability to activate the frostbite status effect quickly to deliver more damage in a small window of 30 seconds with the possibility of resetting frostbite with fire to try to build it up again if the fights belong. But that only happened in boss fights because uh, that takes more time to kill. Uh, the rest of the enemy gets smoked pretty fast. Sometimes you won't even see the frostbite pop. In terms of playstyle, you want to be kind of aggressive with your attack, but not so much that you can't land your consecutive swings. You want to wait for the perfect opening to start your combos and when that frostbite hits, you want to deal massive damage with the heavy attack of the new Ash of War that we'll mention in just a bit. This build setup I aimed it for uh, increasing your two-handed consecutive attack as well as your attack with the Ash of War and some defense because you will end up trading blows with enemies if you overcommit on your attacks, which I always do. All the sword combat is done mid to close range, but when enemies are out of reach or move far from weapon reach, you can use a few spells that you have available to finish them off or use as openers. Now let's check each piece of equipment that I'm using. Like I mentioned before, the main weapon of this build is the awesome Lady, part of the new weapon type called Light Greatswords, which have similar reach as Greatswords, but quicker attack while doing less damage. The type of damage is standard and pierce, and at max level has good physical and magic damage, scaling B with dexterity, C with intelligence, and D with strength. Also will have 105 frost buildup because it was imbued with cold affinity. And since you can change Milady's Ash of War, it opens up for a wide variety of builds with different choices in affinity. So guys, you comment down below which one is your favorite Milady build. The Milady can be found pretty easily and early in the DLC at the outer entrance of Castle Ensis in the start area. You start the DLC in the graveside plain side of Grace. You gotta take this path north and then northeast, passing the Elak Great Bridge and passing the Castle Front side of Grace to get to this part of the entrance to Castle Ensis. When you get to Castle Front side of Grace, keep going northeast throughout the steps to get to the outer entrance of Castle Ensis. If it's your first time there, then you will encounter a giant. Follow the stairs left and keep hugging left until you get to this small stairs with a guard and his dog. And then moving up to get to this ladder on this tower and there will be a chest with Milady inside waiting for you. Milady has very beautiful sword combos with the light attacks, heavy and charged heavy attacks, running attacks, and even the jump attacks. And don't get me started with the dual wielding attacks. And the way the combos of the Milady's flow, finish, and change successive attack when mixing light and heavy attack, it's really smooth, like, it, like it's a dance. But the moveset that I'm going to take more advantage is the one given by the wing stance, Ash of War, in which the player changed to a right side stance and do a three fast slashes with the normal attack, while the heavy attack will do a leaping thrust, which will do a ton of damage, 
and if the enemy has been inflicted by frostbite, wow, it's a ton of damage. I suggest you try these combos while two-handed or even one-handed. So start with the right stance plus R1, then the R2, then R1, and then R1 again. Or this is the other combo, right stance and R1, then L2 plus R2. This actual word can be found in castle ensis inside a chest when you're in castle lord's chamber side of grace just before relana's boss fight just go to this window and jump onto the right side edge and go down to get to a tower and use two ladders to get to the top The rest of the armaments are a dagger with the golden badge of war and the academy glinstone staff with gray sorcery scaling for the 40 intelligence that we got in this build. This time I didn't choose any new DLC armor because I wanted to go with the Frozen theme and not the Disney Pixar Frozen, more like a Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat type of Frost Assassin. So I went with the Black Hood, the Black Knife Armor, the Black Knife Gauntlet, and the grief of solitude to get to that 51 poise. The chest piece will reduce the sound of footsteps so enemies take more time to notice you if you are walking or running past them. But in all honesty, there's there are better armors out there like the Rakshasa armor for example that gives you more attack power per piece if you want to max this build. But you know me, I always go with the theme or you know with fashion souls in mind. The talisman I'm using in this build are the two-handed sword talisman that increases by 15% damage from the melee while two-handing, uh, normal and heavy attacks, charge heavy attacks, and guard counters if you need to. If you want to get this new DLC talisman, please check out this video guide in the top right corner of the screen. Next is the Rotten Wind Sword Insignia that increases attack power relative to the number of attacks you land. The tiers are 6%, 8%, and then 13%. And with the wing stand as of war, if you land all the three slashes, you will get the 13% for sure. Next is the Shard of Alexander to increase the attack power of the wing stand as of war by 15%. And the last talisman is the Dragon Crest Great Shield that will reduce by 20% physical damage taking but if you can live without this talisman, then I would recommend the two-headed turtle talisman or even the Millicent prosthesis or the magic scorpion charm or the new Rolana's cameo. That is pretty good, but I tried it on this build, but to me, it slows down my playstyle to get the buff and it's a pain against bosses. For the physique flask, I'm using the thorny crack tier that increases damage depending on the hits you land by 9%, 13%, and 20%, and stacked with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and lasts 3 minutes. And last, the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier that increases by 20% the magic attack of the Cold Lady by 3 minutes and stacks with Terra Magica, which is one of the spells that I will show next. So the spells that I went with this build are Terra Magica to increase magic damage from spells or the Milady's magic damage by 22.5% if I stay within the sigil on the ground and last 30 seconds. Next is the Carrion Phalanx uh, to add a little bit of extra damage when entering a fight or re-engaging an enemy. Next is the Gleanstone Ice Crack. Uh, that's my sniper spell that shots like a frozen projectile long range and applies frostbite as well so it can act as a fight opener to build up the frostbite. And the last spell is a more Ice Storm that acts as the spell for swarming enemies. The main attributes of this build are Dexterity and Intelligence. Uh, the Cold Milady scales B with Dexterity and C with Intelligence and if you go beyond 150 level uh, you can invest more points in dexterity, of course, and intelligence. Also, faith. This is important as well to get to the minimum requirement for Golden Bow Incantation so you can buff up your damage. The class that I used was a wretch, but you can use an astrologer or a prisoner if you want to start this build from scratch with high dexterity and intelligence. This level 150 character has a vigor at 55 because the DLC enemies are tough and you need a good base health. Mine at 20, this will result in a decent amount of FP pool to use the wing stand as a war at your leisure with some spells. Endurance at 27 to get a decent stamina pool and enough equip load to get to mid load. Strength at 12 uh, just to meet the melee requirements. 
Dexterity at 55. This one is your main stat because the Milady scales be with it. Uh, intelligence at 40. Intelligence is one of the important stats as well. No points in faith, but if you go beyond level 1 or 50, like I said before, you can add points here to get to 25 to use the Golden Vow incantation instead of the Golden Vow as of War of the Dagger. And no points in Arcane either. This Frost Assassin build was a blast because it's very refreshing playing with a weapon that is powerful and have a beautiful moveset with fluid chain combos like the Milady. And also the possibility is to use the same weapon but with a different affinity if you're a fan of Fire, Keen, Bleed build, etc. I would definitely create a different build with the Milady in the future. Uh, so comment down below what is your favorite Milady build. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to help the channel out and make YouTube share this video with more people. And subscribe if you want to. Uh, it's not required, but I appreciate you either way. So guys, thank you for watching. Take care, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!